Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Eric, and I am with Deciphering My Experience, and I am very happy to be talking today with Penny Bradley, the Nachtwaffen pilot, and we have some fantastic news that we have been talking about for quite some time, and we're, we're ready to present it. Um, Penny, welcome as always. I'm happy to be in Alaska and able to be speaking to you in California. How's your day going? My day is going really well. Thank you. And um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know which one of us should say it. So I, Go I get for it. Okay. Um, Penny Bradley will be coming up to Alaska and her and I will be communicating for about a week. Um, we have grand intentions. We want to make a stronger community that is more viable for those where the truth has beckoned them to present their story, uh, to always be handled in a way that is comforting and caring, um, but yet in a way that we can collectively decipher our experiences in a way that we can move forwards to promote an accurate truth that can help those who have traumas that need mending mm -hmm. to move in the right direction without necessarily the distractions of what we see clearly today as an abundance of misinformation. So Penny That's and I- a polite way of putting it. <laughs> I'm trying. So Penny and I are going to put our heads together. I very much believe in this mission. Um, so I am doing everything in my power to make this happen, which is to bring Penny up to Alaska and make this happen. This is, uh, this is the first step. I think this is a big step. And I think Penny agrees so much so that she's taking the step. So uh, the I, I agree that it's important that we find an alternative arena. Um, a lot of the people that I'm positive are real and, and valid whistleblowers are being completely ignored by all of the available outlets for the public to find them. And I know on my channel, I have been vetting people before I interview them. And that's why sometimes I'll have two or three posts, two or three uploads in a week when I've got people that are real and valid and willing to talk. And then I might go several weeks before the next one because not everyone who's real is willing to talk. Mm -hmm. And sometimes life gets in the way. Um, my followers know that I had surgery last October on my shoulder and I've had ongoing issues with it, including physical therapy. And that, um, in fact, I did a whole series of 12 podcasts. I was still wearing the sling from surgery. So um, life sometimes gets in the way. But the biggest problem that we face as a community, well, we have two major problems that the SSP slash super soldier community is dealing with. One is that the UFO community no longer really wants us and they're not being quiet about it. And two, we have failed to police our own community. We're allowing people who are scammers. We're allowing people who are out to harm others. Um, we're not vetting our own. We're letting basically anybody and everybody talk on an equal footing. And at this point, our community is developed enough that we know there are several factions that you could have served in and 
probably hundreds of smaller ones, but we know what the main factions are. And we know that if you're saying you were in one of those and your experience is very different from the others who have been from that faction, that you're probably not remembering it right at best. Mm -hmm. And since we are whistleblowing basically on the CIA, um, because that's who kidnaps us as children. Mm -hmm. Which always goes unnoticed. Yeah, I mean, that's who we're whistleblowing on. And mm -hmm. you have to expect that the CIA is sending disinformation people to confuse and belittle and block us. Absolutely, without a doubt. And so we have a, a set of people who are after the money. We have a set of people who are after the fame. And we have a set of people who are there deliberately to cause confusion. It, it's, it's literally statistics. If you, had a, if you had a page with a thousand followers on it, a percentage of them are on that page to obfuscate, to cause problems, to dissipate the energy. That's their point in being there. Um, exactly. As you pointed out, a, a lot of the environments that you and I, you know, share in common where we communicate with folks that are trying to get help, there's really, there's really no filter to um, protect people from that circumstance occurring. Well, the two groups that I'm an admin on that are related to the topic, one mm -hmm. of them, I'm not the main admin. Mm -hmm. And that group has no filter at all. Mm -hmm. It is anything related to SSP and anyone who is actually a real human being can join. Mm -hmm. And then there's my little group that's currently just over 300 people. And it is growing slowly because mm -hmm. slowly because I do vet people. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's a secret group. So it's by invitation only. Mm -hmm. And I vet people to find out if they've had real experiences. And I'll admit some of the people in there have not, but they're mostly interviewers and publishers and people who are related to the community, legitimately I related. I think there is value to people that aren't necessarily veterans being in the community, but are people that can support the interaction and growth as well. Like you said, an interviewer who may be a friend to the community, not necessarily a veteran, but a friend to the community would, would certainly have value as well. But again, it would take somebody uh, in some sort of admin position to provide the discernment to be able to wield the rod and say, you know, you're okay, you're not. I um, mean, granted, you know, that's not a perfect process either, but somebody has to do due diligence and at least understand that there's an ideal, that this reality exists, that we shouldn't just constantly muddy the waters with anybody that wants to throw their bucket in there and say, this is my two cents worth. Exactly. Um, my small group, we have five admins. Four of us are veterans and the other one is an interviewer. Mm. And we all have enough experience with the community at large to have a pretty good bullshit meter, mm -hmm. which is absolutely necessary in this because so many people have heard so many different stories that they think that we're live action role playing and we're not. Right. And so you do have a proportion of people who think it's a game and that's what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And so it takes a veteran or someone, someone who has heard a lot of veterans to be able to sift them out. And so the five of us are doing that. And we still have people sliding through, but not as many as we used to. Mm -hmm. And I'm definitely not accepting everyone who 
everybody who applies. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't even accept everybody who asks to be my friend on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. People I, I, times I, they I get amazed that. when when I get a friend request and then I contact them and I'm like, why do you want to be my friend? And they're like, uh. Yeah, I look at their wall and I have I have contacted people and said, you know, you seem like you're too nice to be my friend. And they're like, what? And I go, my friends get targeted. My friends have helicopters go over their house at night. My friends have strange cars slide by and honk at them as they drive by. I, my friends have CIA agents show up on their wall. You know, do you really want to be my friend? It's and they're, the they're, day. they're like, uh, maybe not. <laughs> I took a picture the other day and had me dying laughing because I've seen this. I've seen it around before. I've seen other people put this on the internet. There is some car that, I mean, I don't know this whole backstory, but Umbrella Corp is apparently mm -hmm. an important thing. But there's some car that somebody labeled up with all the Umbrella Corp stickers on it and we're in the business of people and all of that stuff. And the first job site that I showed up to the other day, that car was parked in the slot at my first job site. And I took a picture of it. I'm like, this is that car that everybody's always talking about. Umbrella Corp is, is the evil company in one of the video games. And I okay. don't know. I don't know because I don't play it. Um, oh, okay. I, I believe it's called Resident Evil, but don't quote me because I'm not sure. Ah, uh, that's probably what they were doing. I've always seen people related as the SSP, like Kruger or something like that. So I was um, darn. And... It, it's related to the game and people are relating it to one of the Illuminati groups. They always do that. They always do that. And so they, they play the symbols game. Okay. So... Okay. And they have tied it to the Illuminati because the Umbrella Corp um, logo is so similar to the medieval symbol mm -hmm. for a knight for a Knights Templar housemaster symbol. So they're basically just like trying to like they're they're I guess attempting to say it's one of those um, hidden in plain sight situations. Yes. Got gotcha. you. So okay. they're, they're considering the game to be disclosure. Gotcha. Okay. So, and there actually is a lot of disclosure in fiction, in movies, in oh, totally. music, in, in, in uh, video games. There, there is so much actual disclosure that I'm surprised that anyone still doubts anything we come up with. There's so much disclosure. Like, look, at, look at Philip K. Dick. The man who remembered the future. I mean, look yeah. at his books. I mean, come on now. Yeah. Something going on there. Well, before, you know, look at Heinlein. Mm -hmm. A lot of his books are proving true. And it, it scares me if Asimov's books come true with all the robotics. And, you know, mm -hmm. it could be just, 50 years away. Mm-hmm. Yep. Another thing that I was considering in this conversation today, I don't know how far you have gone with rolling out your restart. Have you communicated that much to people? No, I've, I've talked about it on my personal wall and I've shared it in two groups I'm a member of. And the admins there approve the post, thankfully. Okay. Um, I would gladly approve um, having you discuss that on my page since this video will be getting there as well. I'm sure you're gonna be putting this on yours, but if you could share this with me, I'd appreciate it and I would love um, for you to communicate what you're intending. Okay, um, for five years, I was part of and part of a page on Facebook called Truth Beckons. I was not the original founder, but I was the one he left it to. So for the last three years, I was basically running it by myself. 
and we eventually got to 603,000 followers. Wow. And Facebook last year in April decided that I was too dangerous to be on their profile, their platform. And that was the exact words they used. I was too dangerous to be on their platform. And they permanently banned me. And I'm back on a different profile. And Facebook knew that the new profile was me. Mm -hmm. and did not allow me to have pages for a year. And so now I have two pages. One is based on my website, um, Space Portals, wow. spaceportals.net. And the other one, I, June 1st, I restored Truth Beckons. <laughs> And I did talk to the man who had originally founded it mm -hmm. and he gave me his blessing and mm -hmm. said that, that he would share his stash of memes mm -hmm. and um, that he did not want to be an admin. He's having health issues of his own. Mm -hmm. And he's a great guy and I respect him a lot and his blessing meant everything to me. And in the week, I have 170 followers. Excellent. And I'm treating it as a new start. So mm -hmm. I'm not worried about numbers getting to where they were. No it's problem. A, but I'm following the same format mm -hmm. that the founder had set up where it's intelligent. It's Nonpartisan, so you'll see things that look conservative, you'll see things that look liberal, mm -hmm. but what we're really trying to do with it is ethics. Mm -hmm. And ethics is a topic that modern America has forgotten. Mm -hmm. And there will be spiritual memes and jokes and recipes for healthy food. Some may be vegan, but not all. And uh, articles from alternative media. I like the title and the, the cut of your jib, so to say, because it's like the truth beckons. It's not like it's being like, you're not shoving it down somebody's throat. Um, and it can come from many different angles. So it might be beckoning from over here in one category. It might be beckoning from over here in another category. Um, but also similarly, like not any one story is a whole truth. It's just a little piece yes. of something, you know. Yes. That's not, exactly not it. Any direction, find all of your answers. You're gonna get a little bit over here. You're gonna get a little bit over there. There's not any one group that has all of the answers that you're looking for. So that doesn't make them of no value. Um, it just makes them not the whole picture, you know? But yet, we know that most of them, that's a battle cry. Like, we know everything. Listen to everything we're telling you. Oh, every... <clears throat> but you will be I, I don't, I don't certified to, to, to dip into these different environments and, and pull out like you've done before to get the following that you had. So to me, it's impressive because I only just learned about you and this past. So it's very impressive to me um, having, you know, dipped my feet in the water, so to say, of putting information out there and seeing how people respond to it. Uh, my hat well, goes over to you. This page is very 3D consensus reality. Mm -hmm. There's no crossover <laughs> between it and SSP. Mm -hmm. So these are different communities. And mm -hmm. I, want, I want to make that clear because people who watch mm -hmm. the videos are going to think, ah, she's going to talk about SSP there. No, I'm not. This is, broad. this is a place to talk about real world. Mm -hmm. I imagine you might see things like if in the real world there's SSP tech that makes it to the surface in reality in an article. 
It's yeah. something like that. You would it, say hey, it will be mentioned out. on its own. It won't. Right. Be, it won't be tied to SSP. Correct. But, but it will be treated as this is real world, mm -hmm. not not that SSP is not real world. Understood. Okay? And that that's a big problem I have with a lot of the community is they want to make SSP happen in another timeline like in a galaxy far, far away. And it's not, it's happening in our timeline, our reality, but it's not happening on earth. And unfortunately it just doesn't currently have like the meat and potatoes to back it up. So to say like the Truth Beckons site will, it'll just have more substance to it because the topics tolerate it. I mean, it's as simple as that. Yeah, so. Um, I've also spent the last year figuring out what Facebook will and will not tolerate. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be honest and say truth beckons will avoid the topics that Facebook will not tolerate. Right. And that's in self-defense. Mm -hmm. And Facebook censors a lot. I imagine you'll get further down the road if you find a cruising speed and maintain it than try to speed through all the spike strips and roadblocks that could be applied. Oh, yes. <clears throat> so, um, my personal political views are probably going to be visible eventually, but I, I know I'm biased and I'm trying to avoid that and i think i think you're pretty even keeled in as so far as being able to present say hey this is what i think um but yet you can you know allow others their perspective as well you seem to be better at that than most folks that i know well that's because i know i'm not perfect <laughs> it helps it helps when you can come from that angle it it helps to know <clears throat> Pardon my cussing, but I've fucked up more things than I've gotten right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, work mm -hmm. in progress and going my whole life thinking I was just weird and then having my memories activated by an agent was like, you have to deal with that at some point that your whole life was a manipulated lie. and. Mm -hmm and that you didn't see through it. Yup. <laughs> That's fun. So yeah, you, you, have, you have to accept that other people may still be on that same road. Yep, absolutely. I, I've, uh, I have since dialed in what I believe was my activation conversation and I believe that it happened in a boiler room in a customer's home. <laughs> It was a very, it was a very shifty conversation and we were discussing, you know, oddball current events at the time that, you know, there's certain conversations that you have with clients and there's certain ones that are like verboten that you don't go in that direction, but yet you can also get a feel for folks and, and the way uh, the dynamic is changing. And then we had taken this conversation to a direction where all of a sudden it was like, I put my tools down. He blocked the door to the boiler room. And I looked at him and I said, listen, you called me here. That's reality. Yeah. I said, I didn't come knocking on your door. I said, you called me here. You initiated what's going on. And he started laughing. And then, yeah, then I got an education for a few months. Um, yeah, I have friends that give me an education every so often. That's why yeah. you'll, that's why some of my interviews, I'll go along at one level and then boom. I'm up here and then mm -hmm. bump and with each bump comes a lot more nuance mm -hmm. and some of them have been because my experience is ongoing um, I guess I should just blurt it out in the summer of 2018 I was picked up by the Jahami, which is an ET 
group that most of the sky gods on earth are from that ET group. Mm. And now, correct me if I'm wrong, that's the group that most people refer to commonly as Anunnaki? Yes. Okay. And so I was picked, I was picked up by the gods mm. for all practical purposes and told I was personally an abomination and they put me into a machine and proceeded to start peeling my altars off and destroying them. Their intention was that there would be nothing left to reincarnate. And they had destroyed two of my altars when the Germans in space showed up to rescue me. And I had to stop and rethink the Germans in space. Mm -hmm. So those who saw my initial two years of interviews, that was when, before I thought about it. I, and I was going by American earth level propaganda that I had been taught while I was on earth and I had never thought about, did this actually apply to these people? Mm -hmm. You know, when you are kidnapped by the gods and their intention is to kill you and these supposed monster Germans come and rescue you. And yeah, in, in my altars, they had always called me a miscabert, which was effectively the same thing as, as the gods calling me an abomination. Mm -hmm. And so my mind had remembered being insulted by them all the time, but they obviously had valued me because in this in this process they lost an entire ship so my question since then has been what am i to them that they were willing to lose a ship to save me and i still have not gotten a satisfactory answer that would be a question. So I've been told that navigators in human form are that rare, that all of us are that valuable to them. Mm -hmm. But I've heard stories told by other navigators. Um, I've interviewed um, Matt Tracy, and he's also a navigator for Noctvap. And he was dumped into a stasis tank because he pissed somebody off. So. Which is also always possible. Um, the German culture is not set up for people with, with Draco DNA. Hmm. That's probably why the frustration with them that I had in my first two years of interviews. I was in trouble all the time. Mm -hmm. their, their whole thing about picking an insult and that becomes your name mm -hmm. is very offensive to people who are Draco. And no, I did not choose this. This is what the CIA did to me and it's it's something I have to live with and try to make some sort of sense of it and then something will happen and it's like okay I have to reevaluate mm -hmm. now it doesn't mean that my memories changed but it's I have almost like a perspective shift I guess yeah the perspective changed and it was, you know, seeing things from another point of view. Absolutely. 
this is the challenge that I've been dealing with, Penny, as, 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 as you know, because we talk. It's, it's, mm -hmm. This is really why I keyed into the term of deciphering my experience, because I, I know myself. I mean, I have memories that, I mean, I definitively remember what occurred. But then the perspective now as an adult, um, knowing things differently completely changes the perspective. And that might be the best way for people to understand is that like, I mean, as a child, I can only recall things initially from the perspective of a child. My recollection mm -hmm. of something that happened to me at six years old is my recollection of a six year old. Well, That's 30 years later, you learn a lot of things and you can put yourself right back into that memory. And guess what? You don't see it the same way. Does that mean that you didn't remember it correctly? That you're off or you're wrong? No, not at all. It means that you grew smarter and that experience just has deeper value that you deciphered through more experiences. Exactly. And, and then that might mean that tomorrow, I still might learn something again, even more new and then look back at again that six year old experience and go, ah, and it's different again. Well, I was taken with for the first trip when I was four years old. Mm -hmm. So I I went through all of that and I was fifty nine and then sent back to four. Mm -hmm. And then I got my memories back. I was um, 58. Mm -hmm. So at that point, the 58 year old could understand the memories as a 59 year old and go back to the memories as a four year old and a six year old and nine year old and all the way through. And the trouble was the memories were in a lump mm -hmm. and had to be sorted. And I'm still sorting because they were in German. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah I, that blows my mind because if, if trying to figure this stuff out isn't hard enough, you have a whole other language issue. Yeah, I have a whole other language issue. And some of them, I placed them by what the background looks like and what the uniforms look like and how... Mm -hmm what color my hair was because I was very blonde as a child, but as I got older, it turned brown and now it's got gray streaks. <laughs> so I started getting the gray streaks in my fifties. So when I was, I was navigator on the, the freighter, I turned gray while I was there. Do you know, if uh, Mr. Tracy was part, or has, or has he divulged um, that you could speak to that he was part of Montauk or anything like that? I don't remember him mentioning Montauk. Okay, because I'm just curious when you say like Navigator, um, it, it makes me, I have curiosities if that might have been part of the prerogative of the Montauk training was purposeful towards the manufacture of navigators? I'm pretty sure that there was a distinct segment of Draco DNA that enabled it if they connected it to the right part, right section of the human DNA. Okay. And that I was one of the first people they got it right. Mm -hmm. But that that was a goal of their well, it's the department that's now called DARPA, but in those days it was called uh, Military Laboratories. Mm -hmm. And they were who modified me. Mm -hmm. And, but they changed the names every 10 to 20 years. So oh, absolutely, yeah. You, and, yeah. You, you go through the paperwork and, mm -hmm. and you, have, you have 10 years of records under this name, and then you have to mm -hmm. figure out what the next name was. Mm -hmm. Some of them, they will tell you the next name, like Project Stargate. They do that. Mm -hmm. but, yes, if you, if you dig deep enough, you can make the connections. 
And what, what I found being a Long Islander was just geographically, if you just keep looking that by, by any definition, by any title, they keep going to the same locations. I mean, that's mm -hmm. why I'm about Montauk now, because all these programs had factions that, you know, between Montauk, Cold Spring Harbor Labs, Brookhaven National Labs, Shoreham, which was Tesla's facility, previously known as Wardenclyffe, um, all of these geographical locations on Long Island are continually where the operations are happening by whatever title they pick. Exactly. So, Every, they own certain properties. Yes. And those properties keep being associated with similar projects. I found in the paper- They just the, changed the names. <laughs> the minutia of the stuff that they have to deal with in these programs. So Roslyn, Long Island is a town that's very shady and uh, affiliated with CIA activities, and I would suggest is potentially the actual headquarters of their facility. But with that being said, you can find paperwork for them trying to find more parking, that they have too many agents in the area, and that they're putting out a distress call because they have so much activity in the area, which I'm very familiar with this being a very small community. Parking is a real problem. You would instantaneously have a parking problem in this community. So it goes to show the amount of agents they must have had in the area if there's a call in the CIA to figure out the parking issues in Roslyn. Yeah. You know. Yeah, you can track little things like that all mm -hmm. the way through in all of mm -hmm. these programs. And mm -hmm. it doesn't help that everything before 1975 that they could find was shredded. Right. Mm -hmm. Because the Church Commission, which was a Senate investigation named after Senator Church, and he was investigating MKUltra. Mm -hmm. And so the director had everything shredded except for two boxes of stuff that they missed that had mm -hmm. 136 programs in it. So now you'll have, you'll hear young people saying, well, there were only 136 programs because that's all that we have records for. When the truth is those were the ones they missed shredding. That would be like us taking the bones of the cavemen that we found and said, well, there's only that many cavemen. Yeah. So um, what we're dealing with now is the generation that started approximately 1950. Some were, some were a little older when they were taken, so they were from the 40s. But most of us were born after 1950. We were the first generation that went into space. And I know by 1980 or so, they had changed the way that they treated the kids that were taken. So more, of, actually more of them survived after my class. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, that's what the Department of Defense calls it. Uh, I was a grad, I am the last surviving graduate of the class of 1964 from Langley. Mm -hmm. I had a, a DOD slash NSA agent inform me of that. Mm -hmm. But um, they call it classes, and 80% uh, of us died the first year, permanently dead, where they couldn't bring us back. And they had hundreds, if not thousands, of us. Yeah, this, this is still a curve for the folks that hadn't accomplished the tech yet to get you to the other place, so they were still on that hard learning curve. It was a very hard learning curve. And um, I know the batch of kids that I went to Mars with, there were only 12 of us. So out of the approximate, somewhere between 200 and 1,000, because I never saw everybody all at once. Mm -hmm. uh, out of all of those that started in 1959, only 12 of us made it to Mars. Mm -hmm. Everybody else died. 
And that's, I think, what people are going to, that's, I think, one of the obstacles that causes the cognitive dissonance for folks that makes them really want to run from the hills for these topics is that the damage done to children. I mean, this is... They didn't consider us children. I know that. I'm, I'm aware of that. They, okay, they, I, I want to make that not. clear to the public. The right. CIA... The CIA considered us property like trucks. They had modified our DNA, DNA, therefore we were no longer citizens. We were no longer children. We were yeah, their experimental property. Illegal technicality for the comfort of the minds involved. Exactly, but at the same time, it got around the legalities because right. if we were considered test subjects, we were no longer citizens. Right. We no longer had rights. Mm -hmm. And that is a legality that needs to change. And considering that this was less than a decade after the Nuremberg trials, where there was a complete code written out on what was ethical behavior in human experimentation mm -hmm. as a result of the crimes that had been committed by the Nazis and Jesuits in, in Germany. Mm -hmm. And yes, I worded that the way I did because that is the truth of the matter. Oh, I wasn't even making a smirk about that. I was, I was smirking about the whole idea that, yeah, we made all these rules and regulations about um, what you're not supposed to do. And then we, hired those same people that we criticize in the paperwork and mm -hmm. put the task over here. We basically said, hey, what you guys are doing over there is wrong over there. Come over here and give us a hand over here. It's okay if you yeah. do it over here. Yeah, they not only got immunity from what they had done during the mm -hmm. war, but they got immunity for what they were doing in America mm -hmm. and what they're continuing to do in America. And mm -hmm. I'm one of these people saying, Look, I was one of those kids. Mm -hmm. This shit needs to stop. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, if it means giving these assholes immunity to get them to testify, so be it. But it has to stop. Right. The activity has to stop. We uh, can't undo what has been done to three generations of children. Mm -hmm. But we can stop it now. Right. We can admit that it occurred, we can admit that it's happening, and we can find people motivated to mitigate the problem. That has to exist, and that has to be an ideal that people can get behind. And instead of doing that, we're coming up with a brand new Space Force where we can pretend it's all brand new and that the last 70 years never happened. Right. And, until those people get to Mars and find that there's mm -hmm. already 10 million Earth humans living there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like all of a sudden in the last that. five years, somebody just decided to start looking into anti gravity. Yeah. Oh, look what we just figured out out of nowhere. Thanks, Elon Musk. Where would yeah. we be without you? We've had humans on Mars since 1962. Mm -hmm. And the ones we have there now, two thirds of them speak German. Mm hmm. How are they going to explain that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is, it's going to be a different, difficult and challenging conversation. It is. I always, I always uh, impress upon people to look at the faces and expressions of the first flight crew that went to the moon and how, like, you know, they all had that big, you know, Air Force pilot bravado thing when they were headed to the moon. In every, mm -hmm. every conversation, it was so apparent. And then it's like they return from the moon, cameras go on. Look at the look at their faces. They're in shock. Do they have bravado anymore? Nope. Not at all. Very interesting to see these guys taken down a notch after accomplishing such an amazing thing. I mean, I've met dudes before with great bravado. They seem to have been taken down a notch. They seem to have been taken down several notches. Yeah, it's just interesting. So, yes. Um, I have no memories of being on the moon. I do mm. have memories of being on Mars. 
I have memories of being on ships that went all over the place. And I mean, the whole galaxy arm and not just the Orion sector of it. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so the Germans in space have their own area that overlaps the edge of the Draco Empire. And they have a section that is not part of the Draco Empire that heads further away from the core. And there are at least a thousand colonies with over a billion people each. Mm -hmm. This is a huge, huge section of space. And they have been using the builder race portal technology to travel through this because it takes entire sections of, of the galaxy and turns them into seconds instead of eons. I have a question for you about a topic I'm not versed in. You, you know, I'm, I'm very familiar with portals and stargates, but in a particular area, um, have you heard anything about this Skinwalker Ranch having some sort of a portal or stargate? This is news to me. I've not really looked into it or corroborated it, but I keep seeing these headlines about this place being known by the government to have a portal in it or something. I've heard a lot of things about Skinwalker Ranch. I've never been there. Mm -hmm. I know several people who have been there. Um, when talking about it, they're all befuddled. Okay. It, it's something that animals are killed. You're in the house and you hear them murdered. Uh, okay. You hear them screaming. You find their bodies without their skins. Sometimes you find their skins on the trees. Um, there's someone who owns it that seems to have less trouble with, with whatever it is than others have. But it's It's one of those zones that my Cherokee people would say, leave it to what lives there. <laughs> now, whether it's an interdimensional- AKA proceed with caution. As in walk around it. <laughs> um, no trespassing. Yeah, it's a no trespassing zone. And I don't know whether it's an interdimensional portal, whether it's, it's cryptids, whether it's ETs. Cryptids are non-human races who also live on Earth. And we have more than one of those. Um, some are hostile, some are not. And there's whole books with lists of cryptids. Is this the species, folks, I don't know the right term, that are presumed responsible for the people disappearing in the national parks all the time? Um, this is the species category. Okay. Okay. So they, they are non-human races who also live on Earth. And some are friendly and some are not. So then on the are not side, I believe that I have heard that this is why people go disappearing in the national parks. That and I have heard that this is why national parks were formed, was mm -hmm. to protect these, these zones from human habitation because the humans would be eaten. And so when you go into a national park, and I live near Yosemite, mm -hmm. you stay on the marked trails 
you stay where they tell you to stay mm -hmm. and you take your life in your hands if you go elsewhere hmm. because there are cryptids that live there mm -hmm. and there is a topic called archaeo archaeogeography i believe is how you pronounce it mm -hmm. where you can take a satellite photo of an area and you will find outlines of the race that lives there in the geography hmm. and that each area has its own and it's true for every planet in the solar system hmm. so um like on a fractal it, level um, the Ponte, mm -hmm. they're from the second star in, in Zeta Reticula. Mm -hmm. Zeta Reticula is a double star and each of the stars has planets around it. And they are from one of the planets around the second star. Now, my understanding is that there are five races of what we call greys that live in Zeta Reticuli on different planets. Mm -hmm. And this is one of those five races. And they have a watching station in, in, in Sandia Mountain in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Mm -hmm. And they have been communicating with humans through a pair of telepaths who live in Albuquerque. And uh, they are planning official first contact for the fall of 2021. Hmm. So there's lots of, there's okay. lots of things going down. Yes. Um, there is, it's, it's actually almost hard to keep track of at this point. Um, I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on. I know everybody always wants to mean, but they want you to then make predictions. What was that going to mean? What does that mean? It just means something's going to happen. This, this shows that there's a lot of intent being applied, but I am certainly no magician that's going to divine out the true path of what's coming tomorrow. I just say yeah. popcorn and pay attention because something's happening. There's definitely um, players on the chessboard that are being moved all over the place right now. And there's more than two teams. Oh, absolutely. This is a, it's, it's a very, it's a very different way of looking at it, like multi-level. I've heard people say like 4D or 5D chess or something as of late. Oh, which as if it as works if well it in my just, mind. As if it were just two teams on, on 5D and it's not. It's right. I know of at least 30 groups that call themselves Illuminati who have, who have, completely different beliefs, goals, and, and methods. So, um, the amount of people nowadays that, um, fly under banners falsely is rather alarming. I mean, think about how yeah. say I'm this and I am that. And then, and they're not, they're misrepresenting. It's, um, that's at exponential levels now. I am not a member of any secret society. Fair enough. <laughs> I have friends who are, and some of them share information with me. Mm -hmm. But I am not a member of any of them. Mm -hmm. So my loyalty is to humanity, whether I like the shit they're pulling or not. Mm -hmm. Totally so, understood. And uh, I would say that I, I am certainly a proponent of humanity. Um, but there are many stone throwers in this world. Um, so I'll keep my associations closer to my chest because I don't need the negative heat. And I would just say, uh, allow my individual words and actions to be assessed on their own merit. And awesome. throw stones, I think I have thick enough skin. Well, I've been asked to join six mm -hmm. different secret societies. Mm -hmm but i haven't joined any of them totally understood so um 
the members I've met have been decent people. And they were most polite about their invitations and about my mm -hmm. not joining. Um, I, I find that to be the litmus test of the veracity of people's statements in positions and associations is normally um, if they're if they have ethics, um, they're probably actually associated with what they're claiming to be. Um, and if they don't, they probably just wish they were. <laughs> or, or they've done a lot of work and think that qualifies them. Mm, yeah, I mean, there's lots of times that folks um, study a lot, but mm -hmm. that doesn't give you morals. I mean, there's different knowledge and wisdom. Um, I've done a lot of study. And I've had some really good teachers along the way. Mm -hmm. And I've appreciated every one of them. Mm -hmm. And um, even the ones that taught me by kicking me in the head. <laughs> I, I would say a really long time ago, I, I was consciously aware. I guess, I, you know, growing up in New York and meeting a, a melting pot worth of people, so to say. Mm -hmm. I learned at a very young age that every single person that crosses my path and I communicate with has a lesson for me. Mm -hmm. Due to every single exchange, it's up to me to figure out that value, though. But yeah. certainly, I cannot meet some other person and instantaneously discount their value. That would be very unreasonable. I just met them. Um, there have been people that gave off such a vibe mm -hmm. that I have distanced myself and avoided them. Oh, but you still learned a lesson. I never said you had to maintain contact. I just every <laughs> had a lesson to teach you, and I bet you you learned a lesson. Uh, I learned I didn't want to be there. <laughs> <laughs> In specifics that you don't have to mention right now, I gather. Yeah. See? Lesson. Some, th some things don't need to be public. Fair enough. Yeah. But I would say lesson learned. You scored a 100. Thanks. <laughs> um, yeah. Mm -hmm. There are... Uh, there are so many lessons to learn on this planet. Yes. There, there was actually a point in my life where I figured out that I was doing the same things over and over, but with different people. Mm -hmm. And so I would just so, sort of look at the sky and go, what am I supposed to be learning from this so I don't have to go through it again? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I... It's, Suddenly it would become real clear. <laughs> I feel sometimes that this experience here is, well, let's put it this way. If I was to say to you, Penny, in your waking state, when you wake up in the morning, from the time that you wake up to the time that you go to bed, from birth until death, if I said to you, there's actually only one thing that you control. Could you tell me what that is? My breath. <laughs> That's on the list, but it also happens voluntarily if you're not paying attention to it. But I would suggest that in this time period, from birth to death, in your waking state, the only thing that you will ever control is your intentions. Okay. Most people don't actively. Understood. Well, they, they don't partake in applying control to them. They just let their lives run willy nilly, but they, it's, you know, you can be on the court, the, the cart of horses and take the reins or not. It's up to you. Yeah. Um, in this experience, I would suggest that everything else can and will fail you. I mean, you've been living in your body for X amount of decades. You've been utilizing your hands for all these years, right? Mm hmm like a complete expert moving with precision to do every single thing you want so perfectly because you've been practicing all these years and your hands would never fail you. You would never, ever drop anything. 
because you didn't, um, you didn't intend to drop it, right? So why do we drop things? So that shows that even your own body, your own hand will fail you. So yeah, now I have an internal, that. Go ahead. I have an internal decapitation. Uh, my neck was broken in 1977 mm -hmm. and my pain management doctor can't figure out why I'm not dead. Mm -hmm. And I have lots of things that just will suddenly stop. Mm -hmm. And an hour or two later, they'll work again. Mm -hmm. And you didn't intend that? No. Right. So, I mean, if you can't control what is the only thing given to you that we perceive with our five senses, which is your body, you can't even control that. You drop things, we crash cars, we fall off bikes. What makes you think outside of that you have any control whatsoever on the world around you, but yet people think that they do. Um, but effectively, this world is the practice of the application of our intent to see how it pans out, to then try to apply a new action to more align the world to what our previous intention was. And we just keep missing the target and trying over and over again to, to basically realign the action with what we intended. If we're of good intention, you might get some good benefit in the world, but you'll normally just see people beating their heads against the wall, and not really getting this figured out. Well, one of those teachers I told you about, one of the one of the um, exercises that he assigned me was to prove that I am not just a consciousness node on a computer. That Interesting exercise. That the, to basically prove that the physical body actually existed. Mm. So you mull that one over for a while and you start coming up with some really bizarre things. That sounds like something that would have been right out of one of Ben Tov's books. <laughs> So, yeah, I, I come from that kind of background where people ask me to work on things like that. Mm -hmm. So, I always have, um, this is a little thought experiment that I throw out there, okay? So let's say you're sleeping, it's the dead of night, three, four in the morning, you're completely out like a light. You hear a hammering on the front door you go to the front door, you open the front door, and for all practical purposes, you are presented with you. You are outside your front door, and you then say, listen, I know this looks really weird. I can't explain right now, but you have to come with me. Do you go? Shit. <laughs> You're afraid to go, you're afraid to not go. <laughs> I totally understood, but this is a little thought experiment. Would you go? It's, it's you assessing, like you believe it's you, according to your own definition of what it would take to convince. So there's no doubt in your mind, this is me asking me to go with me. The choice is yours. Wow. You come up with some interesting stuff. But yeah, these are the kinds of questions that we really should be asking in the group of people who are dealing with their memories so that they can deal with, are they really remembering what they think they are? Mm -hmm. And the problem that I've had with counseling people is so many of them want to stay and this is just a dream phase. They're very limited on their perspective of what is possible. And if you're going to be limited on what's possible, you're going to have trouble dealing with the probabilities. Yeah. Um, as, as you know, and many other people are aware, nowadays the technology exists, whether people want to debate about its use or not, the technology exists to insert the, a thought, a word, a statement, a sentence 
into somebody else's head. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's existed since the 1970s. I, I agree with you 100%. A lot of people would like to argue that. They can't argue it anymore. As of today, the technology is here. Now the people need to start discussing, well, what do we do with that? Because now the question begs of, if you have thoughts in your head, how would one divine out or discern which one are theirs or not? It's a very legitimate question. Okay. If the technology exists, which it now does. So yes. I, I put it out to the community. How do you figure out if you have multiple thoughts in your head, which one are yours and which ones aren't? I've been asking channelers to simply wear an EMF blocker cap while they're channeling. Mm -hmm. And they won't. I hear a lot of pride coming from the mouths of channelers in their skill set and their oh. ability. Um, but um, being a craftsman and utilizing tools, I've heard a lot of people talk about what they can do and say, I'm awesome. But when you, again, try to get into the meat and potatoes of the conversation and ask them to clarify what their skill set is, what are you doing differently that provides you this end product? And if they can't answer the question, I would call shenanigans. You know, if I ask a guy how he solders copper pipe and how he can make it look so good, well, first he's got to present me a proper project and then he's got to be able to stand for questioning. And if he can't, then I would question that being his work. Yeah. And these are reasonable positions. I don't have to take everybody at face value. I am completely aware of the reality of what is generally referred to as V2K. Mm -hmm. I was one of the first people it was tested on in the 80s mm -hmm. before the um, Kuwait war where it was rolled out on the Iraqis. But when I first was presented with it, um, it was a man's voice in my head and claimed to be Jesus. And <laughs> Uh, he knew the Bible, and he was he was just insistent on certain things, and I couldn't get the voice out of my head. And after a while, I tested him and found things that were definitely wrong with what he said. And uh, I told him I knew he was a liar. And so then he switched over to talking about the torment stuff. In my case, I was old, fat, ugly, and no one would ever love me. And that started about 1988 and continued until 2006 when I got the EMF blocker cap that stopped him. Mm -hmm. And since I wear that basically 24 seven, the only times I don't wear it is when I'm on camera or when I'm going to see my doctor because I really don't want to freak him out. <laughs> I, I'm not on pills. I'm not in a nut house. I don't mm -hmm. belong on it either. And if I don't wear my cap to the doctor's office, I won't be put on it. Mm -hmm. So. <clears throat> I guess part of my curiosity for what we would try to accomplish in the future might be too that, you know, there is, I guess, maybe a hybrid zone of conversation between something like the truth beckons or the SSP uh, situation, because I think of it like, and, and, and TIs is a new term for me as well, targeted individuals with the V2K. Um, so I guess that would get into the mix as well. But I guess in my mind's eye, I think that Targeted individuals, people that are currently SSP related might be getting impact. I shouldn't say might are being impacted by these technologies. So oh, they're definitely being right. impacted they're, by they're actively being impacted and in I guess dealing with or tolerating, so to say, functioning um, through the through the abuse. Um, but I guess in my mind's eye, I'm trying to figure out a way to start to communicate to the folks 
that don't feel like they have any associations to anything. Because effectively, in reality, you and I know that's actually the target. We're just like fodder. We're just like play stuff to, you know, like target practice. Yeah, um, we're, ta we're target practice. We're the ones that that's they, the target. they perfected it on. And they are the target. And that is what 5G is aimed at, is so rolling, like rolling out the V2K on the masses who have never had to deal with any of this. They have no idea that it's even possible and they will lack the discernment to figure out what is an original thought or not. And to be honest, most of them don't think. They just react. Correct. So they'll go along with whatever, whatever the voice in their head says, because if it's at the right tone, you think it's your own thought. Correct. And those of us who have been dealing with it for decades mm -hmm. know how to block it. And you get the amazing people that are like, well, if this was going on, they would tell us about it. Yeah, his name's Robert Duncan. He's telling us exactly what he did. Yeah, and he's targeted now because he was, he's talking about what he did. Right, and, you know. And what, what blows my mind, okay? I have the utmost respect for this man speaking his truth. Mm -hmm. But he's still proud of the work he did. You are very correct. That's a very astute um criticism of the man and i don't even think he would deny it i i imagine i don't think he would either yeah i don't think he would either he would say yes i'm very proud of the dastardly thing that i did no he's very proud of the cleverness of his work yes he's, i guess that would be more aware that it's dastardly and and would really like for it to be stopped but he's mm. still proud of the cleverness of his work yes he's still a rather bright man i i will i will tell you Whoever it was that convinced him that what he was doing was wrong had to have been brilliant. Fair enough. So that person deserves our thanks. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. Dr. Duncan, I was friends with him on my profile that got permabanned. Mm -hmm. And he has not yet accepted my new profile. So, um, but we had several discussions and he said, if you're targeted by my program, it means you're a nobody. And he was most insistent on that. It, it has never occurred to him that you might be a whistleblower for another program and be targeted for that reason. Mm -hmm. I think that's funny that whole, that's like a, such a program oriented statement to try to knock someone down. Yeah. And I saw someone else in another group and I don't know the person or their position, so I can't like give credit where credit is due. Um, but they said something about, um, I guess, uh, I, I don't know what the perp, I don't know the appropriate term. Someone was giving them a hard time and trying to belittle them um, because yeah in the program and the person said that they simply just responded with listen you know who i am and i don't know who you are so it shows which one of us is important <laughs> that's a good comeback i'll have to remember that one. i thought that was perfect perfect because I'm, I'm not good history. at coming at, at coming back to snark yeah, I don't. I don't think on my feet that fast, mm -hmm. and so I'll have to remember that one. <laughs> I thought that was really, really good. It was like, yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, you're bothering me because I actually am somebody. If I was nobody, you wouldn't even be doing this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, <sighs> take that, Mr. Duncan. <laughs> oh, Mr. Duncan. But he does put out a lot of good info. I do, I do see his page, and he is he's a, a brilliant mind who unfortunately got led down a dark road, um, which happens. I mean, there's organizations yeah. that work diligently to find the appropriate talent for the appropriate programs. And someone who is interested in AI interaction with human mm. minds is exactly who they would have chosen. And somewhere along the line someone convinced him what he was doing was wrong and right. that person 
to me, has should have more respect than Dr. Duncan himself because oh, he, he would have been a really tough nut to crack. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So I hope that person is safe and well. Me too. I'm, I'm very happy for the folks that seem to be coming out of the shadows as of late. Um, I'm happy those Navy patents showed up because to me, a lot of the angle, and it might have, it might have been you that had impressed upon me the angle of when you're trying to, I guess, like red pill people or help make them wake up a little bit, is to come from the angle of the technology that is real right now, um, because you can't argue that, you know. Yeah, so, that's provable. Yes, there that's are, provable. There so are very now, few things that we can actually legitimately prove, but the right. technology that's coming out now, especially when it's the same technology I was talking about four years ago in 2016, mm -hmm. and now mm -hmm. it's coming out. Right, so now when we look at these sciences and these texts that we can now prove exist, and mm -hmm. I then suggest the next question we should ask is, who has access to them? Mm -hmm. Next question simply being, do you think they would use it? Simply put, let's answer those questions and then we'll continue the conversation as to what people think is going on in the world. Yeah. Um, I, they, I believe that if they admit the technology exists and if they admit who has access to it and they admit that those people might actually put it to task, then we can start having a more real conversation of what's going on around us. That makes sense. Now, what I did in my own sorting through the, mis the mystery of this mass of memories in German was I started with Jim Mars. I'm familiar with him. Okay. And his books, his, his references about the Fourth Reich and, and Operation Paperclip. Mm -hmm. um, I had followed his before my memories were activated, I had followed his research into the Kennedy assassination. Mm -hmm. And two weeks after his death, the CIA released files that proved he was correct. Mm -hmm. so, uh, I would put out there that if you want to look at what I would call almost the conspiracy theorist's Bible, Pick up Jim Mars' book, Rule by Secrecy. Yeah. And to read it from cover to cover. And then when you get to the back, go right back to the beginning again, start all over because it'll instantaneously read differently again. Once you have all of the information from that whole book, you can start all over again and it's going to be a whole new book again. And go through and check all his references. Yes, he's a very well referenced and well researched man, and he's not full of beans. And that book has so much truth in it. I can't even tell you how many times I've read it at this point. And they're going to hate hearing it. Okay. Mm -hmm. But after Jim Mars, I went to Joseph Farrell. Mm -hmm. Because I remember German uniforms. Mm -hmm. Okay. And from Joseph Farrell, I went to Richard Dolan, who is an excellent researcher, even if he eliminates most of the most of the actual experiencers from his criteria. He only accepts military officers who are still in service or have a DD-214 or people who have a PhD. That's it. That, those are the only experiencers he listens to, which eliminates 95% of us. But the research he does based on that is excellent. Mm -hmm. So my complaint is his sample size is too small. 10-4. And then I ran across Michael Ralph. Michael Ralph is the first SSP whistleblower that I have found. The, the first one in, in point of timeline. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the history timeline. So he's, he's the, the first whistleblower and what he said about Mars 
was what identified to me that I had been on Mars. Mm -hmm. And from him, I went to Randy Kramer. And I knew I wasn't in the same service that he was in. And I wasn't, I overlapped his time period, but okay. So some of the things were the same and some of the things were not. Mm -hmm. And I got, Uh, Andy Bajago, but some of the beings he describes being on Mars, I don't have any memory of them at all. Since you're bringing up Andy Bajago, are you familiar with David L. Anderson and the Anderson Institute? No. Ooh, baby, I think you like that. He's another Long Islander, and okay. he worked with DARPA. And he was also associated with some of the Montauk folks and Andy Bassagio, it seems to have been running around those circles. He has effectively accomplished what he calls time control. He did this a few years back. He literally disappeared off of the internet for quite a few years. And just in the last year, his website, the AndersonInstitute.com, which I have referenced in some of my videos and and put the links up, he's back and he's talking again and basically just like, hey, listen, here's the deal, time control is legit, I do it, other people do it. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is. Yeah, he, he, was, uh, he started out on Long Island, he used to be in the Air Force, he was previously with DARPA and then he cut ties with them and there's plenty of information available on David L. Anderson and his institute. Well, before I had my memories activated, I was part of the truth of truther community. Mm -hmm. And so I had read a lot of stuff that is out there, but based on my, my memories is in error. Mm -hmm. And so there are certain authors that I simply will not listen to them at all because mm. what they're saying is so wrong from what I remember. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, they're really popular. <laughs> but mm. it's not, I'm not, <clears throat> I'm not here to throw stones at people. But mm -hmm. at the same time, there are folks that uh, in the here and now at the time I get mad about what they're saying and blow mm -hmm. up at them. There mm -hmm. are several interviews out there where I have blown up at people. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'm kind of a volatile guest to have. <laughs> mm -hmm. I've, I've had a couple of contacts where um, people pretty much identified who they wanted me to communicate with and it was like, I don't, I don't think you're going to want that to happen. And they, they were like, well, why, why is that? I said, because I can completely undermine their story. And I don't think they're going to appreciate that. Yeah. You know, and it is what it is. I'm not looking to throw stones, but if you're going to bring the conversation to me, I do not have to tolerate your foolishness. Yeah. There are folks out there who are very well known in our community. Mm -hmm. And I won't name them because they're so happy. <laughs> See, I don't even know who she is, this Sue girl. <laughs> yeah, they're so happy. And yeah. to be honest, I have mm -hmm. nothing. I'm on social security disability. Mm -hmm. And it's not even legal to sue me. So I, I could go out and, and yell and scream the, the names, but I'm going to be a little classier than that yes and that's why we need to take our community in a better direction and not get caught in all the bickering that's been going on and oh. i am so looking forward to growth and um helping people out again because i think it's getting a little bit um chaotic because I, I almost feel like people are running around with their like chickens with their heads cut off i'm seeing a lot of that because there are too many conflicting voices mm. and people 
how to put this politely. The American public schools, at least in California, stopped teaching critical thought in the 1970s. Mm -hmm. So we have our second generation since then mm -hmm. who are not instructed in how to think critically. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying yeah. they're stupid. They've just never been taught how to think critically. It's and, a less developed uh, mind if you're being given less developed skills. That's what's what's gone on is they're being it's not their fault, mm. but at the same time, they are incapable of independent thought. And you when that. you have an audience that's incapable of independent thought, and then you throw at them con conflicting conflicting ideas from more than one source they are unable to figure out who is telling the truth. Now that is why in my group, I vet who is allowed in mm -hmm. and whose videos I share, whose work is allowed into my group. The people mm -hmm. that I don't think are trustworthy, their stuff doesn't get in because I'm trying to present, it may be a rounded voice, but it's at least compatible. Mm -hmm. And then you'll have people in the group, well, so-and-so says such and such. And I said, I, that came up today even. And mm -hmm. I said, you don't see me sharing their stuff in my group, do you? Pay attention to who I don't share. Mm -hmm. Right. The power of the edit also matters. The power of the edit matters. When you're mm -hmm. in a secret group, everything's moderated. And I only let in about half of what's presented. Mm -hmm. uh, we have one member, and I'm not going to name him, but he seems to think we're LARPing. And 90% of what he presents is based on fiction. And we already have a problem with people thinking that we're making this up as we go. And like as if they're the what, like showing up to throw their hat in the ring and add another chapter to what they perceive as a fictitious tale. Um, there are people that are doing that. Yes. Okay. And um, I'm not sure if it's out of malice or if they genuinely think we're pretending. I would have to imagine both exist. I mean, if we can imagine them both, there's got to be characters for both sides of that street. And so this particular man is a very nice man, very polite, mm -hmm. very genuine seeming, but everything he wants me to post in my group mm -hmm. is based on movies or TV shows and it's all fiction. And I'm mm -hmm. like, no, I, yeah, there I, has to be more substance to that, to that angle than just that. Yeah. You can't just present it. You have to at least say something about it where it relates because and I, and I, get this some disclosure that occurs in the mass media like that. But again, that's still only a component of the problem and the disclosure movement. Like it's not the, the cure all answer to be like, Oh, well just look in the movies. There's all the answers you need. Well, that's not because the movies make it sound like that the ETs are all evil and the humans are all good. Mm -hmm. And those of us who served out there know better. Yeah, I mean, to me, I think of it like New York. It's a melting pot. There's more, there's everyone. And, and like, I always see people saying, um, don't think that, you know, like they'll say, don't think all the Dracos are bad. I don't think all these people are good. There's a mix in everyone. I know that 100%. I've, I've been, mm -hmm. you know, from a very metropolitan area. There's no one ethnicity that's bad and one that's good. There's a-holes in every group. And there's people that'll give you the shirt off their back in every group. Yes. And every race out there has a racial agenda 
I'm sure that okay. not all of the individuals subscribe to. Mm -hmm. But you have to understand what that racial agenda is before you interact with any of the individuals. Mm -hmm. And that's something I'm not hearing from most. Mm -hmm. You have to know that the Draco's interest is in protecting their empire and getting taxes from subject races. You mm -hmm. have to know that. That's their agenda. You have to know that the Jahami consider Earth their property and that we are still their slaves. You have mm -hmm. to understand that because we've been worshiping them for millennia. Okay? Like I said, I was kidnapped by the gods. Mm -hmm. that's, how he, that's how a human is set to see these beings. Mm -hmm. I mean, I thought I did a pretty good job pretty good job. I didn't piss myself when they got me. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I came back terrified. Mm -hmm. And there were people that just flat out told me I was full of shit. <clears throat> and people, some of the people who knew me then saw the overnight difference in my attitudes. So, um, it, it's, I, I did a complete 180. It's funny about perspective and depth of experience and exposure. Because mm -hmm. I get, right, you're saying that you told someone this story and their response is you're full of shit. It's almost in a way, it's almost funny because it's justifiable and reasonable in a way, but yet it also shows the disconnect that we have from each other as human beings and our experiences and that we don't share them enough, right? Because mm -hmm just as easily walk out of my house right now, go anywhere in my town, bump into anyone, and they might, you know, say, you know, what's the craziest thing, you know, uh, you know, or they, I might have a hat on. They say, oh, that hat's a South Pole hat. Are you going to go to Antarctica someday? And I say, oh, no, no, actually, I spent a year at the South Pole station. And they might turn to me and say the exact, oh, you're so full of shit. You're a bullshit artist. Yeah. But that's the depth of, depth of experience and exposure and trust of strangers that we don't give credit to other people's stories and we so rapidly discount or discredit it because it's so far from our own experience we can't even begin to wrap our heads around it and i can appreciate that if i had a south pole hat on and i said that to somebody they might turn around and think i'm totally full of shit. yeah it this was hard because these were friends that i trusted terrible when it's not a stranger yeah it was, these were not strangers and they were people who had had a personal experience with the same ets that's so, ridiculous yeah but they had had wonderful experiences with these ets and i had not mm -hmm. and they could not fathom that those beings treated me the way they did that's terrible that's just bringing like, biases right off planet as well yeah Oh man. So, you know, you have, you have to think about all of this and some of the things I have learned in the last two years, I wish I had known at, when I first went public mm -hmm. and my recorded testimony would be different. This is perfect that you're saying that penny this is this is why we need to do what we need to do because i agree i i thank you for the path that you cleared for someone like me to follow in your footsteps and help myself heal and then hopefully return the favor so to me i think that the direction that we're going is is hopefully me returning the favor to maybe clear the path a little bit more help you go on your way in the direction that you want to go um because i think this all has to go back Again, like you said earlier, we need to help people. Mm -hmm. This all boils down to whatever title or whatever faction you want to align with. You should be helping people. And if you there and your are millions of people who have served in these factions in space. Mm -hmm. And if you include the super soldiers, those are the ones who have served in the two mercenary companies, Kruger and Monarch. Mm -hmm. It could go into tens of millions of people. Mm -hmm. And they're all shoved out there on their own. 
Like mm -hmm. we're crazy, we can't talk to medical people or we get put on medication. And I don't know about others, but when I've been put on, on even pain medication, I'm trapped in that nightmare and can't get out. Mm -hmm. I avoid even taking pain meds because of that. I don't want to be trapped in those memories. Mm -hmm. I think, as you know, what we're seeing with these programs, like I said earlier, like where, where the, the first gen, well, you would be more first generation, where I fit, I don't know. But regardless, we are the paper targets that they're practicing on right now. Mm -hmm. We know it's the masses are the target and the goal. And what I've heard from you that like, I would be anomalous and other people that are remembering and waking up right now because ideally the program is trying to use these people and have them not remember. Yeah, the goal was to have us Said. not remember because then they would have deniability. Right. So with that being said, there's a lot of people on this planet right now where the system's just working and they're ignorant. They have uh -huh. no idea that they've been processed, just done perfectly. They've been replaced. They don't remember. Um, but with that being said, I, be I believe, this is my opinion, um, that there is potential, hopefully, for this system to fall. Um, but that's going to put a lot of people in a position of having a world of trauma put on mm -hmm. top of their shoulders that they are not in the practice of dealing with. Oh, like happened to me. I had a remember code used, and it was wham. I, yes, so you're familiar with this. It's very unfortunate, but my idea is that now folks like you and I can look down the road and see that other people are going to have this happen to them as well, uh -huh. potentially in mass. So to me, knowledge with not with knowledge comes responsibility. Yes. What what do we do knowing that this can happen, and how do we help prepare for mass? almost a mass casualty incident on a soul level. Well, I was helping others until I had my shoulder injury last year. Mm -hmm. And I had so much grief from the people that I was supposed to be helping mm -hmm. because they could not accept I was injured. Mm -hmm. And so I stopped doing counseling entirely. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't started it back up yet because I'm just now getting to where that I can function part of the time. I appreciate everything that you just said. I think that might have also been a sign that um, helping individuals is wonderful. The problem coming up is in mass. Mm -hmm. To me, um, I think you might want to go more than speaking on an individual level which I think is apropos for what you're doing now with rebranding or restarting things. Um, I think we should be pushing in, in mass. How do we help people in mass? Almost like mass counseling, mass information, mass dissemination, mass truth is beckoning. Um, one of the things I'm thinking about when you come up here is um, if we have conversations with other folks, more round tables. I haven't seen a lot of that lately. And that maybe we could um, put heads well, in a circle, so to say, and well, maybe it's hard. these things. It's hard to get a round table together because you have, you have people that are working odd schedules because mm -hmm. of the quarantine, mm -hmm. which the quarantine is still in effect in my state. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know I how all these people. I don't know how all these people are out rioting whenever the, they're supposed to be in quarantine, but mm -hmm. people do what people do. <laughs> even if we could just, because you and I will be in front of one camera. So even if another person or two, I don't think that's unreasonable um, for the hours that are in a day. I mean, to get an hour here or an hour there, I think that we can find interested people that would be willing to, I don't know, I guess throw their hat in the ring or maybe future conversations on this idea of more folks waking up in this what do I do moment. Because even I mean, like I might even have to pay for the for the pro version of of, of Zoom 
So, I was thinking yeah. that myself as well. Same here. I was, I was already thinking um, something in that capacity. But either way, that um, conversations can be had. You, myself, other people, where we can sit and we can speak and we can have conversations that matter and get to the root of growth mm -hmm. and can, I guess, sift the silt out of the muddy waters. Yes. Because to me, that's the fair thing that has to be done. Um, if there is some sort of a, a you know, in a, in a medical capacity, if there's an actual mass casualty incident, um, you need qualified people to come in and, and, and help people. And you just can't have folks running around in the middle of it all, just talking all kinds of shenanigans that isn't helping anyone. Yeah, there has to be a triage set up so that the most damaged are helped first and mm -hmm. you have to get all of the nonsense out of the way. Yeah, I mean, at some point you that, have to stop That's what happens out. in a triage situation. And yes, I agree. Once the 5G goes in and they put the V2K through the 5G, then mm. we're going to have mass casualties. Mm. And it'll be a matter of until they realize that they're targeted, mm -hmm. they're going to be dangerous. Understood. So it's the the most important thing will be staying safe while you're mm -hmm. helping people. I I kind of look at it in a way like how do we inform people? And I, I in my head I hear Jeff Foxworthy and is you know you might be a redneck stand up routine. In my head I hear like you know you might be an SSP veteran. Like we need to let people know in a way like what are the signs that people who are completely not in the know? How do you take okay. someone? Was what, what, even you the, want the signs? That's what I'm getting at. So like, if you were you the list right now, if you were is, to talk to a total normie, is, do it. If I were, if no, this is the list that I go through when someone contacts me and says, mm. I think I might be one of your people. 10 4. Okay. Do you have missing time? Do you have a voice in your head with no, no visual to go with it? Do you have traumatic memories of battle whenever there's no reason for you to? Okay, so you're not, <clears throat> it's somebody like me who never served on earth military who has traumatic memories of battle. There's no reason for that. Do you have traumatic memories of ETs, including, but not limited to, 15-foot spiders having you for dinner? Okay. There's lots of critters out there that could be eating you. I can imagine. Um, do you have an autoimmune disorder? Because almost all of us, 20 years after we're sent back, our, our bodies start breaking down. And the autoimmune disorders are thyroid problems, adrenal problems, um, lupus, fibromyalgia, any or all. But if you- I've heard of the opposite occurring, like as if you hit a mark and all of a sudden with zero effort, all of a sudden everything just started going more awesome. That I feel happens like I hit it. That happens when they first send you back in, especially like some of them describe it, they send you back in a clone with no problems. And yes, some, the Department of Defense is infamous for that. The other, the other factions, not so much. Mm. Um, what else? Um, you know stuff you're not supposed to know. That's like when I was six years old, I took my father's 30 out six apart, cleaned it, and put it back together perfectly. Mm. Scared the shit out of him. That was completely part of what was being studied in Grill Flame, Center Lane, and all of those projects. And they clearly defined it many ways, but they would say, um, Knowing without knowing, when somebody knows something and they, as the scientists, could know that 
there was no reason for that person to possess that information, but yet they were correct. Now, so, massive in their studies. Sometimes that's telepathy. There's many ways. This, 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 this. They didn't want to try to define what they were observing. They just wanted to state that there was an observable phenomenon of knowing without knowing why, and they also knew we're nowhere near explaining it yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, telepathy is one way. Mm -hmm. And in my case, when I was on Mars, I was mm -hmm. trained in all weapons. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was past training that the conscious mind had blocked, but the subconscious still knew. Mm -hmm. Now, that's something that people forget. Even mm -hmm. the people in these programs, that are running these programs. Your subconscious is a witness to everything every alter does. Mm -hmm. And your memory is not stored in just your brain. It's stored mm -hmm. in your auric field. Mm -hmm. So even if half your brain is shot away, your subconscious can still access the memory. Mm -hmm. And yeah. So when they manage to erase it out of your physical brain, it doesn't mean it's gone. No. But these hypnotists who think that they're doing you a favor by rewriting what's in your subconscious, they're screwing you over. Mm -hmm. They think it's so wonderful because they changed the, the memory from negative to positive, therefore you're all healed. No, you're not. That's a, that's you're, a false memory. Your trauma is still there, and now you can't fix it because the memory's wrong. Yeah, you can't access the issue. Exactly. So That's they, have, they have fucked you over. Mm -hmm. So there are hypnotists that I give them hell on a regular basis, and then there are good ones. But mm -hmm. the ones who do that are actually quite proud of it. So what you do is you ask them, do you change my memories? Mm -hmm. And the ones that do say, oh, yeah, I'll change your negative memories to a positive one. You don't want that person. Yeah, no, that's not appropriate. Uh, you don't want somebody that's, that's going to erase your memories. You don't want someone that's going to change negative to positive. You don't want somebody that's going to belittle you. You know, you... I guess I go the direction of, like you say, the, the, the dark work. I, I go to places, I just want them to unlock doors for me. And unfortunately, it's not usually a really fun trip but it is what it is, but it's realistic. Yeah. You when know? I went the first time, I had a list of 10 questions. Mm -hmm. And I got answers to six of them. And I got an answer that I didn't, to a question I didn't ask. And the other four, I've gotten the answers since then. They, it came up in, in either my research or, or my life. i gotten the answers mm -hmm. but uh, the second one was for someone who wanted art done of a altar that I served with so I could I could do it for him mm -hmm. and the third one was after the um, Jahami picked me up I had someone help me try to retrieve the memories from those two altars that were destroyed. Mm -hmm. And what we actually did was time travel back and retrieve them. Mm -hmm. So I, not as people, as the altars, but the memories were there. And the effect it had on me was to reinforce my confidence in my memories. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I had an extra two altars agreeing. That's a perk. That was a perk. I have 2,200 altars and I have mm -hmm. reintegrated 30 mm -hmm. and three of them have been destroyed. Mm -hmm. Two by the Shahami and another one by how that, that, how she was killed. She was in a clone. 
It sounds to me like you have a good system of crowd control going on right now. I try. I know. That's the, that's the way that I look at it. It's like, it's just crowd control. That's all it is. There's so many opinions in my head. <laughs> the fact that I can come up with a coherent story about what all of them have experienced. I can totally follow that. People don't appreciate how difficult that is. I can follow that. The, the, the fractalized mind has its pros and cons. Um, telling a linear story is not really on that list. I have so many points that are missing mm -hmm. that I'm sure the other 2170 they're about mm -hmm. alters have the rest of the story mm -hmm. but what's available to me i t i have been telling because if even half of it is the objective truth it's important mm -hmm. and yeah i've had to deal with the possibility that these are deliberately implanted false memories it's, it's a very reasonable concern because the technology exists. But now with that being said, it just brings us right back to you were apparently um, worked on by a technology against your will or you can't recall. So we're right back to the same conversation of the truth beckons to decipher your experience and what the hell is going on so that we can clear a path for other people who are negatively impacted because now we know and we're responsible to do something. Mm-hmm. And the responsibility to do something is getting it stopped being done to others and right. helping, helping as many of the other vic victims as we can. If and somebody wants to come to the table. A lot of people don't like the word victim, mm -hmm. but that's what we are. And yeah. if we are able to heal that victim and into a almost whole person, that's a victory. Correct. I and imagine. I'm not if, using it as a, as a negative term. I'm using it as we did not choose this to happen to us. Right. It says right in the paperwork that people were worked on unknowingly. Yeah. All over the place. All um, over the place. So even like with that being said, you are a reasonable person that if somebody sat in the chair next to you, and put up a very reasonable presentation as to how none of your memories were what you thought they were, but in fact, there was a science that existed that implanted every one of them. If the person could put up a reasonable debate, you'd be like, that sounds really reasonable. I'm gonna have to consider that. It's not like you're a lunatic that's like, my story oh, is the only I've, version. I've had that. Um, Shane Bales is known in the community. He's mm -hmm. a whistleblower for what most of us would call the Rothschild Illuminati. Okay. He maintains that the SSP veterans were all experiencing virtual reality inside deep underground mines, uh, deep underground military bases. Okay. That none of us ever went into space, that it was all implanted memories. Okay, then, then I would welcome him to prove that just as much as anybody else. I mean, he, he could suggest that, but I would imagine that if he could put that out there, it would be a great conversation. It was a great conversation between the two of us. It was When did this occur? When, oh, did it happen? Did you present this or it was in private? This was in private. Gotcha. And, totally understood. And he's, a, he's a member of my private group. My secret Ten for. But then it still brings me back to that if that activity is going on, right? If he's right and you're wrong, well, we still have the responsibility to stop that activity from occurring. Exactly. Either way, there's stuff that has to be stopped. Yes, correct. And there are suffering people who are left with traumatic memories, whether they were real or implanted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean... Heaven forbid, maybe everybody with an SSP memory is just showing signs that that's a successful, a successful replant of a memory to cover some other nefarious story we've yet to figure out. This even yeah. worse. 
Sure. I mean, yeah. for real, at this stage of the game, like what really surprised <laughs> you in 2020? <laughs> I mean, I'm straight up waiting for the Wizard of Oz to come in with the flying monkeys <laughs> at this point. <laughs> you know? Okay. Yeah, the Wicked Witch and the Flying Monkeys. I'm just waiting for the full, the full, my, my life to go full circle spectrum. Yeah. And a little hole will pop up out of the ground and a white rabbit's going to jump out and tell me I got to follow him. Or yourself at the door. Yeah, so or myself at the door. I mean, that's usually the one that I'm waiting for every night. I go to bed and I'm like, when am I coming? I'm getting so sick of waiting for myself. <laughs> well... <laughs> I think we've given the folks a lot to think about. I, I believe that is correct. And I am so hungry right now. Holly's been making okay. stuff in the background. I hope it wasn't too noisy. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. And thank you for accepting the invitation. I am so excited about you coming up here. Um, this is going to be fantastic. I have a mountain of information to share with you. And I already know that you are very much the little archivist and that it's yes, in I'm an archivist. Yes. So I have archives that I will lay in front of you. And I think that you are going to have a blast. I bought a new pair of glasses so I can read my Latin books. Excellent. So I'm going to bring those along. <laughs> mm -hmm. Excellent. And I can't wait to cook with you guys. I, I can't wait to do Alaskan King Crab. Uh, you said you never had it, correct? I've never had it fresh, no. Excellent. Fantastic. So we're going to have some, you you have all kinds of seafood that you like, and we're a very seafood-oriented state, and the weather should be very fair the entire time that you're here, so we'll keep our fingers crossed, and um, it should be a wonderful time, Penny. Thank you very much for your time. Tell Lou that I said hello, and um, we'll talk. He's waving over there. Okay. Thank you. Bye.